Kicking off the list at number 10, the creation of Adam. We'll start this list off with one of the most famous paintings of sculptor and artist, Michelangelo. The creation of Adam. You've seen it at one point or another, or you've seen it referenced at one point or another. It was painted back in 1508. The poster of E.T. was inspired by this painting. With little hands, little oh, phone home. Memes have been on a whole new level thanks to Michelangelo and this piece. But what's the dark background here exactly? Perhaps the plethora of naked folks in the sky all bunched up together? Not exactly. It was known that back in the 1500s, Michelangelo used to dissect bodies, all in the name of art. Of course, why not? He would create anatomic artwork, that's why his creation of Adam kind of looks like he's crawling out of an organ. To be honest, I never noticed it at first, now, I can't unsee it. That's definitely the inside of a body. The Sistine Chapel has many dark pieces of art. I may or may not mention another. Number nine, Bill Clinton. We've all heard that clip downloading music growing up. You know, I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Like bro, I'm trying to listen to Christmas music. What is this? Whose voice is this? What did I download? Why is this computer not working anymore? I'm so grounded. Back in 2006, former US President Bill Clinton showed off this beautiful portrait of himself, done by the incredible artist John Nelson Shanks. As far as portraits go, this is beautiful, the art is beautiful and all that, but that pose, I mean, I don't know, something's, something's off about it. His stance is like, let me redo it. He just looks uncomfortable, you know? He doesn't look ready yet. Well, that's because the shadow on the left side of the portrait, it's meant to represent Monica Lewinsky. I'm not even lying to you. I knew it. I felt like there was some darkness in here. I'm like, oh, something's off here. There's some shady history around. Pun intended. The artist himself admitted that this was indeed the case. He used the dress shape as symbolism to the scandal while he was creating the artwork. I thought the dark background here was Bill's pants, but well, I was wrong. That's why we're here. We like to educate. Number eight. The Madonna with Saint Giovanni. For this next one, we'll be taking a look at a painting from the 15th century by artist Domenico Ghirlandio. This painting is currently in the Hall of Hercules in Palazzo Vecchio in Florence. Also, if I'm saying any of these names wrong, you can tell me. I'm, it's probably gonna be a lot of them. I'm trying. The painting shows the Virgin Mary, infant Jesus, of course, with a six pack, for some reason. And over her right shoulder, we can see this object floating in the sky. Let's take a closer look at that, shall we? What is that? Is that a drone? A magnetic balloon? A, a weather balloon? Those weren't around then. What's even more interesting is that a man is looking up at the sky at this object. He's even covering his eyes, shielding the sun to try and get a better look. Man's going blind to try and see what's hovering above him. It's always a good sign as well when your dog is barking at something next to you in the sky. Art historians believe that the object is an angel, an angel resembling a cloud, while others believe that it's a clear sign of alien visitors. I'm others. I'm like, oh, E.T., the whole thing. I'm, this is starting to make more sense now. What do you guys think? Was this the 15th century version of drawing the sun at the top corner of your painting? Or did this mystery artist just document UFO footage with his own brush? Number seven, Cafe Terrace at Night. Upon first glance, you can tell this is a piece done by the fabulous Vincent Van Gogh. The blue tones, the streaks. I did the Van Gogh experience downtown Toronto and it was mesmerizing, honestly. The floor is moving, I was like, falling into the walls and everything, it was great. While his 1888 oil painting, Cafe Terrace at Night, looks like a quiet late night summer dream, it's actually pretty dark when you start looking closely. I'm not a Van Gogh expert by any means, but Jared Baxter, he is. Back in 2015, Jared brought forth this idea that Cafe Terrace at Night was really Van Gogh's version of The Last Supper. This figure in the center with long hair and 12 surrounding individuals, one of which is slipping into darkness, it checks out. He also says there are hidden crucifixes in this painting. I knew there was something spiritual about that Van Gogh exhibit. I knew it all around me. I'm like, is that a floating crucifix? Where'd it go? It's gone. Number six, Medusa. Another one of the most recent paintings on today's list is Medusa by Caravaggio. It was done back in 1597. Crazy that that's a recent painting. That's so long ago in my head. And this photo, I'll admit right off the bat, is a little bit haunting. It's, yeah, it's a little gory, it's a little graphic. But where does this idea come from? What compels a person to spend this long on a scary painting? The entire time I'd be like, mm -hmm. We all know the story of Medusa, the woman with, you know, snakes for hair, when you look at them, you turn to stone and then you're stuck forever and it's horrible. Well, this is a painting that really captures her, her essence, her beauty, you know, really just, uh, her complexion is so nice, her snake complexion. The snakes really add to the moment, you know, without taking away. The blood oozing out of her neck also draws the eye, it's a nice, Oh, it's a nice accent. This painting was meant to be a depiction of the defeat of Medusa, obviously. The legend goes that Perseus, who is the son of Zeus and Danae, was given a shield by Athena. He took said shield to battle Medusa and he managed to outsmart her by letting her catch a glimpse of her own reflection in that shield. Bam! 
You played yourself. Yeah, she turned herself into stone, and then this is when he took his sword out, and you know, you can probably fill the rest in. You've seen Game of Thrones. A happy moment, perhaps? I don't know. Imagine having this in your home. I wouldn't sleep. That's terrifying to look at. Number five, the Mona Lisa. No way she's on this list. What is she up to? How can the Mona Lisa possibly be on this dark messages list? She's literally just... She's chilling out, she's so calm. Another masterpiece from Da Vinci, coming from the 15th century. There's already been, of course, hundreds of theories surrounding this painting. Like perhaps she could have been pregnant, given her stance with the, you know, the hands doing the thing. And the veil over her shoulders, those were worn often by pregnant women during the Italian Renaissance. But back in 2011, a clue was found in the painting. Yeah, a clue, like we're national treasure all of a sudden. Silvano Vincetti supposedly found letters and numbers painted into her eyes. Teeny tiny microscopic numbers and letters. How fun is that? Yeah, I was at my desk earlier and my forehead was like touching my computer screen. I was like, really, are you sure? I was looking, couldn't find anything. My eyes aren't that great. The L over her right eye stands for Leonardo and in the other eye, there's a 72, the number seven and two. We believe so far this relates to Christianity and Judaism. Seven, the creation of the world and two, the duality of men and women. Meanwhile, I'm over here drawing that really cool S. I think I nailed that, I'm not gonna lie. Number four, The Ambassadors. This one got me, I'm not gonna lie, I got the creeps after this. The Ambassadors is a painting from 1533. I've seen this one before, as I'm sure you have at one point or another. Hans Hobian the Youngers painted this lovely room with, you know, scholars, there's a globe, a mandolin, you know, to pass the time, help inspiration, as we all, that's why we get mandolins. We have one in the corner here at the studio. Chris whips it, often. But at the bottom, we see an anamorphic skull. It makes you want to cock your head around almost. It doesn't seem to fit in properly. Like the angle of the skull is wrong. It looks like whenever I try and use Photoshop, it's just something's off. Experts believe this was done intentionally to remind us that death is around the corner. So when I was looking at this, I was like, why is that doing that? And I'm like, oh, death is around the haunting. Next, number three, the old guitarist. Any fans of Game of Thrones on here? Well, this next one gives off major White Walker vibes. The old guitarist is, well, exactly what you think. It's an old man, hunched over, white hair, playing a guitar. This would be creepy regardless, just on its own. But when Pablo Picasso was putting together this masterpiece back in the early 1900s, he had some tricks up his sleeve. At the end of the 1900s, in 1998, researchers used infrared on the painting. Again, national treasure style for some reason. And this time, it wasn't a hidden message, it was a hidden woman. Yeah, another woman was painted underneath the elderly man. So because this paint is naturally fading now, she's becoming more and more clear to see. That is so deep. That's the most deep thing. Am I into art? Am I enjoying art? Am I researching? This is fun. I like this. Number two, Netherlandish proverbs. Back in 1559, Peter Bruegel the Elder, great name, created this oil painting and we're still trying to unravel everything in here. And this painting, I mean, for one, it's massive. There's a lot going on. It's on display currently in the Gamau the Gallery in Berlin. It's got a lot going on. And when you really start to focus, you can see some weird going on in this painting. What is that guy doing? That guy's banging his head off the wall. Walter White's been throwing pizzas on the roof for some reason. That fish ate a bigger fish. This dude fell off an ox onto a donkey. What kind of heist was going on in this town? What is happening? Ah, uh, I see. It's supposed to be horrible. Lovely. Proverbs were a hot topic back in the 1500s. Apparently, over 100 Dutch proverbs and idioms are seen in this painting. He also aimed to illustrate the stupidity of man, and given how much of a shit show this town looks like, I'd say Peter nailed it. And finally, number one, the Arnolfini portrait. This one is the most impressive paintings on our list. I am a sucker for reflections. And for this one, we'll be looking at Jan van Eck's painting from 1434. It's quite old, the oldest on our list. This is an oil painting titled the Arnolfini Portrait. It shows Giovanni de Nicolaio Arnolfini, his wife, and a little doggo. In the background, that's where things get mysterious. There's a mirror, a painted mirror. It's been widely believed that Jan is in the painting themselves. We love an artist cameo, nice. I'm actually in that wall too. Believe it or not, you just can't see me yet. It hasn't been long enough. Also, written in Latin above the mirror, there's a message. A Latin message. Let's do it. The message reads, Jan van Eck was here. 1434. That's got to be the oldest blank was here of all time. Even older than Brooks was here from Shawshank Redemption. That was pretty old. A message like that with the artist hidden in the painting, that gives me goosebumps all around. And I'm not really entirely sure why. Number 10, Madam X. We'll kick off this part two with a scandalous painting. 
Oh my, yes, shield your eyes, young ones. We got spaghetti straps coming in hot. This painting was deemed too scandalous back in the day. Madam X, the portrait of Virginie Amélie Avigno Gautreau, originally painted back in 1884 by John Singer Sargent. Now at first, John made the woman's straps sliding off her shoulder, a little, you know, a little, ooh, my lovely jewel strap is, ooh, slipped off, ooh. Apparently that was too scandalous for the upper class society around him back then, so John had to repaint the straps back on. Yeah, backlash was still so strong after John had sold the painting that he moved. The guy left Paris because of spaghetti straps. Are you kidding? What have we done? Art, he's so good, and we pushed him away. Come paint me like one of your fine French gals. Paint all the straps on me, I don't care. On or off, what's up, let's party. Number nine, hidden beached whale. Look closely at this 1641 landscape from Henrik van and Thonnesen. This masterpiece here is titled View of Skeveningen Sands. Yeah, it's a nice one, it's pretty, cold of a day. I wouldn't go to the beach personally. Do you notice anything out of the ordinary in this painting? Anything at all catching your eye? What's everyone looking at here, you know? Art is so mysterious. So many questions in this one painting. I just, I feel like we're missing something here, you know? Like just something in this painting. What about now? Yeah, there was a beached whale in that painting the entire time and we didn't know until 2014. How amazing is that? At some point after it had been completed, the work of art was painted over. So for hundreds of years, somebody was looking at this wondering what the meaning was. He's like, why are they all on the beach? What are they looking at? It was a beach well this whole time. It was haunting the entire time to look at. Someone didn't like that. You know what, rightfully so. I would have painted over that whale too. No, I wouldn't have, that's a fabulous painting. I would have never touched that. Number eight, David and Goliath. We of course have to look at some of the artwork of the Sistine Chapel that's loaded with history. Fun history, some would say. A panel that shows David and Goliath specifically, or rather it shows David about to defeat the Goliath. Michelangelo added a hidden message in this one painting. The stance that David is making looks heroic. He's got, you know, athletic stance for sure to, you know, do some bad stuff right away. But his stance is in the shape of a Hebrew letter, the letter Gimel, which refers to reward and punishment. Good thing it wasn't Resh or else he wouldn't have won the battle. His arm would be all the way over here. He'd be like that. Wouldn't have won at all. These are like Easter eggs in famous paintings. So far, I'm loving this. And if you're enjoying the content as well, hit that thumbs up. Let us know, then we can do more art for you. Let's move on. Number seven, hidden self-portrait. In George Surratt's painting of a woman powdering herself, there's a window in the top left corner. And me, personally, I would have gone with, you know, the sun. But George here, at first, he went with a self-portrait. A little selfie. This was odd behavior though, historically, for this artist because he wasn't known for painting self-portraits, ever. This was the only time it happened. Thanks to the Courtauld Gallery in London and a few x-rays, now we can make out the first draft of this 19th century painting. The portrait does resemble a photo of George as well. We compared them both, so we're definitely able to confirm that's him. He did at least one self-portrait. That's pretty historical. I'm, I'm glad we found it. X-rays were actually done back in 1958 and 1987, but the machine could only detect a layer of paint, not the actual image, if there was one. Pointillism is so impressive. I tried it one summer and was absolute garbage. Number six, Garden of Earthly Delights. This this piece was done back in the late 15th century. Painter Hieronymus Bosch had a lot going on in this one, that's for sure. There's a group of naked people eating a big strawberry. There's a mermaid riding a fish. This one's got a lot of wacky stuff on it. We love it. In 2014, a hidden message was found on somebody's butt. Yeah, I'm not joking. There's actual like music notes drawn across somebody's bottom. Uh, so a college student translated it and now you can listen to it. You can listen to that guy's butt. That little melody Bosch was humming to himself while he was painting sounded like this. Yeah, well, it's not gonna be stuck in our heads anytime soon, but it's still fun to hear art come to life, you know? Number five, the starry night. We had Van Gogh in part one, Cafe Terrace at night, so naturally, we have to throw him in part two as well. The only time we've seen Vincent Van Gogh as a time traveler was in Doctor Who, but how did Vincent Van Gogh know about turbulent flow decades before scientists even knew about it? Yeah, that's the question we're trying to answer here on MA10. The Starry Night was painted back in 1889, but in 2004, NASA observed a distant star where dust and gas were swirling around the cosmos. It reminded NASA of Van Gogh's work, so they looked into his art a bit more, and mathematically, his artwork mirrors natural turbulence. This was also at a time where Van Gogh's mental health was not A-OK, -okay, so how he was able to get the math is accurate that long ago, and also via art, is mind-blowing. Number four, Bacchus. Michelangelo Caravaggio, okay. 
1595 painting, Bacchus, looks pretty calm at first. The god of wine and being a tipsy, a personal favorite god of mine, if I may. It's currently in the Fizi Gallery in Florence, and it wasn't until 2009 where, you guessed it, they found a hidden image. In the Care of of Wine, on the bottom left of the painting, there is a self-portrait of Caravaggio. We can't see it with our eyes, but technology, once again, has our back here. There's a tiny little head reflected on the wine jug. Maybe, it just looks like a smudge at first, but with the help of radio diagnostic investigation, we can see the bigger slash smaller picture. We can see a man with his arms stretched out, the world's smallest selfie for the win. Number three, The Last Supper. We've all seen this one at some point, I'm confident. If you haven't, Look at this, isn't that amazing? I'm glad I was able to show you this. The Last Supper, painted by Leonardo da Vinci in the late 15th century, has been the talk of many towns. In this painting, we see John the Apostle, and it's been debated that it's actually Mary in disguise. I know, don't tell anyone. And that V-shape in between Jesus and John represents the female womb. That was in Dan Brown's The Da Vinci Code. I didn't make that up. If I made that up, I wouldn't be here, that's crazy. But another secret could be lying in plain view this whole time right on the table. In 2007, an Italian musician found hidden musical notes in this painting. Musical notes hiding in bread rolls and in the hand of the apostles. We have two musical messages in this video, that's crazy. This makes me want to look for more clues in paintings. Let me just go look at some butts on art for a bit. Any notes on butts? What does that one say? It's an E minor? No. I'm gonna start looking at more musical notes on butts of all the paintings. I'm gonna try and find one. That one's kind of an E flat, you know? E flat. That's how we do it. Number two, the separation of light from darkness. This one's another anatomical one. Makes me feel weird. Once I saw it, I couldn't unsee it. I'm not gonna lie to you. The separation of light from darkness, Michelangelo again. Michelangelo was featured on part one, the creation of Adam. It's definitely an iconic piece. But once you see the hidden organs in that painting, it changes you for a bit, you know? This one as well, another iconic piece from Michelangelo seen in the Sistine Chapel. We have the central figure, God, surrounded by four others. What we often miss though is the spinal cord that runs up God's chest. It's like one of those hidden object books, only the art is beautiful and the objects are gross. I'm like, oh, it's a spinal cord. That's found it. And finally, number one, the lady in the grass. We'll end this part two on another piece by Van Gogh. Patch of Grass was a Van Gogh classic done in 1887, and upon first glance, the painting appears to be, well, nothing more than just that, a patch of grass. But it's beautiful and it's art, so naturally we'll look at it for too long. Oh, it's just the wall? That's not art. I thought it was the grass. That's just the wall. This one doesn't contain any deep space mathematics by any means, but in 2008, Dutch researchers used an x-ray, took a deeper look into the grass, and found the portrait of a woman. How haunting is that of a discovery? Imagine being the first person to find that. That's really scary. That's a horror movie. Around one third of Van Gogh's artwork has old paintings underneath it. He would often paint over his stuff. We're only recently finding them, which is exciting. Scientist George Deke of the Delft University of Technology, he's literally peeling back layers of paint history digitally. The painting right now hangs in the Dutch eastern city, Aturlo, in the Kroller Mueller Museum. So next time you take a look at this masterpiece, just know that there's a woman's face looking back at you. And while you're watching this video, just know I'm actually looking back at you right now too. Isn't that creepy? Art, digital art, still art. In our number 10 spot, we have the separation of light from darkness. This is a painting done by Michelangelo in the Sistine Chapel. And yes, of course, he had some hidden anatomical illustrations throughout the painting. Apparently, if you look closely at the painting, you can find a depiction of the human spinal cord and the brain stem in the center of God's chest leading up to the throat. I mean, it could also be the clothing that he was wearing, but perhaps it's not. Perhaps he was trying to say that it's possible that God was a human, or perhaps he wasn't. <laughs> but I suppose that's what's cool about art. After the artist has finished, it is up to you to decide what it means to you. In our number seven spot, we have the music lesson. This painting was created by Johann Vermeer in 1662 to 1665. This painting has become known over time for perhaps its secret symbols of sexuality. In this painting, the woman looks like she is gazing down at the keys of a virginal, an instrument that is associated with female purity. However, apparently she is actually looking away from it, perhaps to meet the gaze of her instructor. Ooh, scandalous. This is shown by looking closely at her gaze in the mirror above her. Was this depicting a secret affair, perhaps? There is also wine on the table that is considered an aphrodisiac, and the instrument on the floor looks like it could also resemble a male's reproductive part, if you know what I mean. 
So perhaps there are one or two secrets hidden within this painting. In our number six spot, we have View of Shaveningen Sands. This painting was made in 1641 by Hendrik van Anthonissen, and for quite some time it had a mystery to its viewers. People would look at the painting and think, what the heck are all the people on the beach standing around and looking at? It took 140 years for someone to remove a coat of yellow varnish while restoring the landscape, and this revealed that underneath there was a large whale on the beach, and that is what everyone was looking at. Wow. This is only a recent discovery in the last 10 years, and finally, this great secret has been solved. I wonder why the painter may have covered up the whale in the first place, though. Perhaps it was so that he could have a hidden secret within his painting. That's what I would do. In our number four spot, we have The Persistence of Memory. This is a painting done by Salvador Dali in 1931, and it is truly a sight to see. In this painting, you see a bunch of melting clocks that most people believe is an ode to Einstein's theory of relativity, as Salvador was known to be a very wise, surrealist painter. But apparently, he was once quoted as saying that the clocks were inspired by gooey cheese. Quote, the melting clocks are nothing other than the tender, extravagant, and solid Solitary, paranoid, critical camembert of time and space. I suppose you can get inspiration from everywhere. <laughs> In our number two spot, we have the prophet Zechariah. This is yet another work by Michelangelo where there is believed to be some cheeky hidden secrets throughout. The painting was done in the Sistine Chapel in 1508 to 1512. The other works that we talked about in this list and in part one of this video showed that perhaps Michelangelo put some wise ideas in his works. But this painting shows that perhaps he was feeling a bit cheeky when he was doing this painting as it is possible that the young boy on the prophet's back is doing a sort of flipping off gesture <laughs> of that time. It looks like he has put his thumb between his middle and index finger and yeah, that's the 16th century equivalent to giving the middle finger. <laughs> if this were to be true and the boy is gesturing in this way to the prophet in the painting, this could very well reveal Michelangelo's true feelings about the Pope, they say. Ooh, 16th century gossip. This is starting to feel a little bit like Bridgerton, but you know, 16th century. 